This is where it began, on a cape on the eastern coast of Florida, Cape Canaveral. The date was May 5th, 1961. The United States was preparing to send its first man into space. The astronaut was Alan Shepard. Well, I must say there was some apprehension, yes. I think that uh, we went into this thing with our eyes open, but all of us realized uh, the possibilities of uh, partial success or failure. So uh, there was apprehension. There's no, no question about that. The second and final suborbital flight was made by astronaut Virgil Grissom. February 20th, 1962, the first orbital flight was made by astronaut John Glenn. Three orbits were completed. May 24th, 1962, a three-orbit mission by astronaut Scott Carpenter. October 3rd, 1962, astronaut Walter Schirra completed a six-orbit mission. May 15th through 16th, 1963, the final flight of Project Mercury, a 22-orbit mission by astronaut Gordon Cooper. The goals of Project Mercury had been accomplished. The feasibility of placing a man in orbit and returning him safely was demonstrated. All the McDonald people had done a real great job on his capsule, and it was in good shape, and all the systems worked beautifully and it made it rather a routine flight. It was, it was routine in that respect that it worked just like advertised. The next phase of space exploration is Project Gemini. The flight crew for each mission consists of two men, the Gemini astronauts. The Gemini spacecraft is a notable technological advance over the Mercury. New systems have been designed, and only those the astronaut must use himself are inside the pressurized cabin. Not only can the attitude of the spacecraft be controlled, orbital changes can be made during flight. The spacecraft is designed to support long-duration missions, missions as long as 14 days. The effects of prolonged spaceflight on the spacecraft and its crew will be determined. The Gemini astronauts will use various techniques to complete rendezvous and docking in space. This is a technique which must be developed if successful lunar missions are to be accomplished. The astronauts participate extensively in the Gemini Development and Qualification Program. Before they fly their space missions, the Gemini astronauts assist in conducting tests of the reliability and operation of spacecraft systems. These systems are checked out in conditions simulating those encountered during a space mission. During the several months preceding their flight, the astronauts become familiar with every detail of the spacecraft they will use. They gain valuable pre-flight experience in the operation of spacecraft systems. Following each series of tests, the astronauts, engineers, and management personnel discuss possible engineering changes. Yes, uh, we can recommend changes, and oftentimes uh, we can uh, recommend uh, relaxing certain specifications. If the specification, for instance, on a particular knob uh, reads uh, so many torque uh, or so many inch pounds, we find that we can operate with a different quantity where we'll often change the specifications, provided it is acceptable. This testing program ensures the operational reliability of the Gemini spacecraft during a space mission. For instance, the returning spacecraft lands at sea. Accordingly, it must be qualified for post-flight operations in this environment. Astronauts worked with engineers during the Gemini Seaworthiness Qualification Program. After the on-deck checkout, the spacecraft was placed in the Gulf of Mexico. For 17 hours, the astronauts rode the pitching, rolling spacecraft. Everybody who has participated in this particular program has felt nausea at one stage or the other. But it appears that after you become used to the vehicle and its motions and its rolling and pitching, that this eventually goes away. It takes about six hours. While the astronauts worked the necessary spacecraft systems, 
technicians on the tending vessel monitored the operation. After the completion of the test, the spacecraft was retrieved. Its seaworthiness was clearly demonstrated. Just as important as the exacting preparation of spaceflight equipment is the preparation of the flight crews. Academic courses and briefing sessions acquaint the astronauts with the theory and mechanics of spaceflight. Other aspects of the training program, including survival training, prepare them for contingencies which could occur should a mission be aborted. The most important single area of the training program is flight simulation. The Gemini translation and docking simulator is used by the astronauts to practice the final portion of the critical rendezvous and docking maneuvers. This trainer consists of full-scale mock-ups of the Gemini spacecraft and the docking end of the Agena, the rendezvous target vehicle used for Project Gemini. The spacecraft and the target ride on friction-free air bearings. The trainer is designed to teach us uh, to become familiar with the final phases of the rendezvous and docking technique, which will be so necessary for the uh, lunar landing mission. We cannot accomplish the lunar landing mission successfully unless we have learned to uh, dock and rendezvous in Earth orbital missions. And that's really uh, one of the main reasons uh, and justifications for Gem the Gemini program. From the spacecraft, the astronauts fly the last 100 feet of the simulated rendezvous. An analog computer supplies the equations of motion for the simulation. An instructor monitors and evaluates the astronaut's performance. He can insert systems failures for which the astronaut must correct. This is one of several simulators used for astronaut training. The key training device is the Gemini mission simulator. From the crew station of this complex trainer, the astronauts can fly their entire mission from liftoff to touchdown without leaving the ground. Digital computers supply the information governing the simulation. The entire mission or portions of the mission can be programmed. The astronaut's performance is monitored at the instructor's station. As in all simulations, systems failures can be introduced. Here too, the astronauts learn to correct or compensate for these failures. The flight simulator is the most important part of our training that we do because we right here we can simulate as well as we can anywhere here on the ground exactly what we plan to do in space. So I believe that the simulator is our most valuable training device and is the piece of equipment that we spend the most of our time preparation for a flight. Crews for the early Gemini flight spend over a hundred hours in this simulator. This time will increase as the missions grow in complexity and duration. Sessions in the mission simulator continue until the time of flight. Then one day the simulations are ended. This trip to the launch pad is for the real flight, Gemini 3, the first manned Gemini mission. The flight crew, astronaut Virgil Grissom, command pilot, astronaut John Young, pilot. The launch vehicle is ready, the spacecraft is ready, the men are ready. We're out to get information on all those systems to determine not that it will just fly, but how well it flies. And will it support a long, du long duration mission? Can, can we be expected to take this system that we have designed and go on to a long duration mission, a 14 day mission? Will, it, will, is, will these systems support that? Do we have the, that capability? Uh, do we have the capability on board to go rendezvous, rendezvous with another vehicle? Can we use this as a, as a uh, general workhorse and, and uh, platform for other scientific experiments? Uh, how do we go about doing these things? There's a great deal of information that's going to come out of it. The flight of Gemini 3 was the first manned qualifying flight for the Gemini program. Its success paved the way for the coming missions. 72 days later, the flight crew for Gemini 4 entered the spacecraft. James McDivitt, command pilot, Edward White, pilot.
the Titan launch vehicle lifted the spacecraft into the first orbit of the four-day mission. During these four days, data were accumulated on man's ability to live and work in space. This was the prime purpose of Gemini 4. Near the end of the third orbit, astronaut White left the spacecraft to become the first American to maneuver in space. While McDivitt held the spacecraft steady, White performed experiments designed to study man's reactions and abilities in this new environment. Uh, there was absolutely no sensation of falling. There was very uh, little sensation of speed other than the same type of sensation that we had in the capsule. And I would say it would be very similar to flying over the uh, Earth from about 20,000 feet. The, the Earth does, you can't actually see it moving underneath you. Uh, the, I think as I stepped out, I thought the, uh, probably the biggest thing that is, was a feeling of accomplishment of one of the goals of the Gemini 4 mission. These first maneuvers demonstrated man's ability to control himself in space, outside the spacecraft. In achieving the goals of Project Gemini, the astronauts are an integral part of the vast government, industry, and university team a team that is pushing man's horizons into the limitless universe. 